We're going to begin today by stitching area one of the Bernina Ruler Work Quilt Along. And the directions tell me, and you do not have to note this from the video, it's all in the directions, to quilt a line a, a half an inch from the bottom of the area and a half an inch from the top of the area. So I'm going to use the lines on my ruler to do that. And today you'll see I'm quilting on the Bernina Q24, the long arm. But you can do this on a domestic too, and I'll have some tips later um, for you for domestics as well. And you'll be able to see a little bit about quilting on a domestic. Here I have the Bernita rule, straight line ruler, and the increments on the ruler are a quarter inch. So a quarter inch, a quarter inch, the next line's a half inch. Let me see if I can get a piece of cardboard for you and put it behind the ruler so you can see better. Okay, so here this is a little better. A uh, quarter inch, a quarter inch, a half inch. Um, if I put the edge of the ruler right on the edge of a block and stitch along the edge of the ruler, my stitching line will be a quarter of an inch away from the edge of my block. But if I instead positioned this ruler so that the first etched line was along the edge of the block, then my stitching line would be actually a half inch in because it would be that quarter inch and then it would, it would be another quarter inch from the edge of the foot to the needle, so that's a total of a half an inch. So that's how I'm going to use my ruler here. And the real, real advantage of using rulers on a domestic is you don't have to rotate your quilt top. And um, we'll get to that later, but I want you to see the alignment here. Now, to start, I need to be half an inch up, because I'm stitching a line that's a half an inch away from this bottom, a half an inch up from this corner. So to gauge that, I use the edge of my foot. So I'll put the presser foot down so I can see a little better. And I can see, let me scroll, zoom in here. I can see that my foot, when it's positioned right here, is about a quarter of an inch away from that corner. That means my stitching line will be half an inch away. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring up my bobbin threads here. So needle down, needle up, presser foot up, same way you do on a domestic. And then I'm going to do a few stitches very close together. Now, here's the big thing. I do not, 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 oh, the bobbin thread was long there. I don't want to bring my ruler over until my presser foot goes down because I could potentially crash down my presser foot on the top of my ruler and that would be bad. So instead, I'm going to do a few stitches close together. If you're on a long arm, you would be in BSR2. On a domestic, of course, you don't have stitch regulation when you're using your ruler foot. So instead, you're um, going to start off with a stitch that's um, pretty close um, together, like maybe a 0 0.4, 0 0.6 in terms of the way it looks. Of course, the settings um, don't determine that your hand speed and the um, speed your push their foot pedal does. Um, and I'll get to that later. But I'm going to do a few stitches close together, and then I'm going to gradually increase my stitch length until I get to what looks like it's somewhere between a 2.5 and 3.0 stitch length. I'm going to stop and move my ruler down, aligning that line on my ruler with the edge of my block. That's going to what um, is going to be what ensures that I'm a half an inch away from the edge of my block. And I'm filming this mostly on a long arm just because it's easy for me to film it without another set of eyes and hands. Um, but you can do the same thing on a domestic, and again, I'll show you some of that later. Now, when I get to the edge of my block, I need to quilt up the edge of my block. So even if I'm on a domestic, I don't rotate my whole quilt. What I do is I rotate the ruler. Now, you'll notice in the directions, it tells you um, to quilt right across on top of your um, mark lines in the center of the block, but on the edge you quilt um, a little away because you want that stitching to later be caught in binding. Um, so I'm going to quilt right along the edge of my lines I've previously quilted. And when I get to that corner, I stop with my needle down, I rotate my ruler. Oh, I don't need to quilt over this again. I need to actually quilt a half an inch down, but no worries. We're just going to travel back over our stitching to get a half inch down. How do I know when it's a half inch? Well, it's, you know, with half an inch, it's kind of easy because I know it's a quarter of an inch from my needle to the edge of the foot. So when my edge of my foot is about a quarter of an inch away um, from that corner, that's where I need to start again. So now I'm going to snug up the ruler back here, making sure that that first line on the ruler is right on top that line of stitching that I already have. Goes all the way across. It's time to start the piano keys. I'll be right back.
I'm back and I put some tape on my ruler. And the reason I put the tape on my ruler is I'm about to stitch piano keys and this ruler didn't have all the alignment marks I needed. I wanna stitch piano keys that are an inch and a quarter apart. That means um, as far as where I align my ruler, it's a quarter of an inch of the needle to the edge of the foot, then another quarter inch, another quarter inch, another half inch. If I line up my ruler so that that half inch mark right in the center of the ruler is sitting right on top of my previous stitching line, then my piano keys will all be an inch and a quarter apart, which is what I want. But my problem comes when I don't, I can't really figure out how far do I need to travel along this line to get to an inch and a quarter. I don't really know. How far do I need to travel? That's why I sometimes put on extra tape. I've measured this, and you see how the tape is positioned exactly an inch and a quarter apart? I can use that. So if I put the tape right along here, and I'm stitching right on top of my previous line here, and I go to the next piece of tape, I know they're an inch and a quarter apart. So now when I turn the ruler, it's at the perfect alignment point to stitch my piano key. So now I'm going to go straight. Let me just get it aligned. Straight down. Stop when you get to the corner then rotate my ruler and you see I can use that kind of measurement I made with the painter's tape to make sure I'm in just the right place. And then I turn it again and I go back. Stop, turn it again and go across. Now if you're getting corners that pull you might want to do an extra stitch when you get to the each corner um, if your corners are kind of pulling and becoming too rounded. But I'm just going to continue making my piano keys until I complete this area.